Good morning to what is now 840 beautiful subscribers. Thank you very much. Welcome. Weekly report in, as I said I would. Hope you're all well. Before I start gabbling, hit the like below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to the new subscribers. Hope you're well. For those that are new, this is our channel all about the build that we've actually taken on in the lovely southeast part of Barbados. Look at the weather today. Absolutely gorgeous. Slightly cloudy. 720. Sweating already because I've been working on some manholes. So I'm going to quickly show you around some of the stuff we've been doing in the last week. Um, answer some of the questions that I've seen in the last couple of days. Show you what I've actually been working on this morning for the last half an hour or so. Um, so first of all, somebody asked about the gate. It's a beautiful gate. We need to get the wood. Uh, for those who don't know, we're looking to buy a hard wood and have it planed down into sort of one to two inch um, widths, four foot lengths, and probably around about half an inch to three quarters of an inch apart across the front. But finding wood on the island at this present time, certainly someone that's willing to plane it down into size is very, very difficult. So we are currently looking for someone to do that for us. Someone asked us about, um, can you see the gate in operation? It's pretty slow. Um, Benica is the actual maker, as far as I'm aware of the, uh, the motor. Um, here on the island, I think it worked out at just under 4,000 Bayesian to have the motor supplied and fitted. The gate, aluminium frame, I'd say between two inches some and three and a half to four inches some square. Very light, um, installed, again, was just under 4,000. So in total, um, I think we paid around about 8,000 for the gate to be fitted and installed. That includes all the, uh, the teeth along the bottom um, installed by a separate um, individual as well. And then we've also had the, uh, the driveway gate, sorry, driveway gate, the pathway gate and the utilities covered gate uh, made and installed as well. This is the speed, it's a little remote. You get three of these to go everywhere. That's the only downside. It's pretty slow. But apparently they only do two models. They do a turbo version, which is about $2,000 more, apparently. So, you know, it's not really gonna make a drastic difference where it is now. So for the extra cost, I don't think it's quite worth it. Um, it was meant to have an electric connection to the pathway gate so that when someone wants to come through the pathway, they press um, the intercom and then inside you get a bell go and then obviously you press the button to unleash the gate. And what happens is when the gate is opening, it also locks that so the lock that the gate can't open in case someone's silly enough to walk through and get chopped in half. Not that I think you'll get chopped in half with that speed. But anyway, someone wanted to see the gate in operation. It's set in the moment for 30 seconds, so it'll stay open for 30 seconds. Gives you time to move out. There's obviously two sensors. Um, there's one on the inside here and there's another one on the inside there. So if anything gets in the way of, uh, you know, an obstacle sort of goes across the laser, then it will obviously stop. Um, but it stays open for 30 seconds, then automatically shuts. Um, so that's the gates. Um, we are looking at the latches for the gates at the moment because we were going to go electric, but budget's tight at the moment. So we're looking to put something manual on those for now. Um, so he's going to nip down at some point tomorrow, measure up the rest of the manholes and bring you some, some example latches. There goes the gate shutting. Um, so we're probably going to fit something manually to that for now, just so that we can actually get the gates shutting and um, staying shut in the meantime. And then we'll look at the electric side of it later on. Um, just very, very quickly, because I don't think I have shown you. So the gates are very, very light. Again, this one opens outwards, obviously, because the gate is going to come along. And there's the uh, electrics for the intercom um, and the sensors. But as you can see, there's no latch at the moment, which you've got to get sorted out. Over here, we've actually got one on the utilities covered as well. Again, same style. Again, very light. Um, again, but nothing on there at the moment. So we've got to get the latches on there to ensure that they uh, don't break themselves away. So yeah, so the gate's in, obviously it looks so much different just with a gate on there, let alone one that's not even finished. I mean, there's part of me that wishes I actually got him to just do the whole aluminium cladding on it, and then it would have been another job done, but it's not the look I was looking for. Um, we're starting to get a little bit of cracking here, which is a little bit of a movement crack going on, obviously from the plastered boxing that we put in, which is a bit of a shame. So that's gonna have to be touched up and sorted at some stage. And the one thing we have done in the last week is we've worked on getting the front door sanded and painted. So it's had its first couple of coats. So that is a dark um, anth anthracite, I think they call it, um, satin wood. So an oil-based paint. And we rolled that on with a, um, a big 
thick foam roller to ensure that the dimple effect on the door is not so big. Now what we would do in England, we would, dry, we would wet and sand that, wet and dry that, paint it again, wet and dry that, paint it again. And then once you've wet and dried it and it's gone like a matte, then we would normally put some form of lacquer over it and it gives it either a matte satin or gloss finish, nice and smooth. So I might, I might still do that. But in the meantime, yesterday I had to fix the foam through here because there was quite a big gapping through here. So I'm going to have to trim that today and get that finished off. Um, we need to get all the paint off the window, obviously, because there's paint all over that now. Um, obviously, the other thing I did uh, was de-weed down here. This was an absolute mission. Uh, we've been talking to a couple of landscaping companies about doing this for us, uh, but it was going on and on and on. And, the, and I came here to empty these manholes out so that we could actually get all of the timber out and start getting the measures done for the manholes to go in. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get it done. So obviously last week, as you saw, I went through here like a tornado, got all that removed. And as you can see, the grass pods that we had podded quite some time ago are still here and still surviving just. Bear in mind, they were completely covered from the sun. Um, and I've also sprayed down a weed killer in the hope that the weed killer I've used is just going to kill the weeds, not the grass. And the grass has gone a bit yellow. Um, but today I might actually get the sprinklers on just to give them a little bit of wet. So this manhole has been taken out. I've already shown you guys anyway. But as you can see, manhole has been taken out. Um, so the actual um, two by four framework that was in here has been taken out. Any of the shuttering um, ply has been taken out. That one's been done as well. This one's been done. This is a grease trap, so this is a bit horrible. Um, again, the, the mud is still very soft down here. So as you can see, that's all taken out as well. Um, and my man Dion is going to come down tomorrow and remeasure all of them and remake the rest of the aluminium manhole covers. So in the midst, what I've been doing today, already, he says, he's been working out the back um, to remove those as well. I didn't want to do them any sooner than he was coming, just purely because I've then got manholes that are very weak. So as you can see, this one uh, unfortunately has fallen in. I've got to take all this out. So out here, what I've got to do, obviously, is cut up the weed sheet. And then I've got to remove, see, this is quite simple. So it's just literally removing these two by fours, the inner ones and the outer ones, and also the inner formwork in the hope that I don't drop it. Because if I drop it, I can't get it out. Um, I've got to do the well in the corner over there, which we'll do in a minute. These two here, so we have a grease trap, which is here, which I need to take off in a second. And this one here, for argument's sake. So this one needs to be done, as you can see, it's quite basic. Um, over here is another one. Again, very empty. Pretty sure this one is connected to that one, but that one seems to be it's lower than this one, which is a bit weird. But anyway, that one there's a grease trap for the kitchen. Um, that one is the uh, this one here is as far as I'm aware the uh, shower etc that comes into here. Then obviously they connect over to that one. This one's pretty rotten and it's got termites in it. So um, there's water in there, which I'm not too sure why because it's not had any water going in it from the from the room. So it must be obviously water that's leaked in and it's gone a bit stagnant. So I need to get all of that out and redo that um, and this one again being a grease trap termites see that is termites so again because it's got water in it it gets damp I, I assume that's the reason why it goes termite orientated so again I'll be going to get my magic powder and my magic spray and I'll be removing all of that and spraying that to death in a minute so um, other than that, the main thing has been speaking to pool contractors about the pool. So um, we have had some people out. Um, yesterday, a good guy came, which seems to be the person I'm preferring. He talked the right talk. <clears throat> he certainly had the right recommendations. So fingers crossed his availability and his price will come in where it needs to be and then he can take over. So um, he's been recommended to me through someone on the island that provides pool equipment. Um, so fingers crossed he's going to be good he's going to take over potentially removing more of this um, skim and getting that redone so he's going to re-skim then he's going to re-plaster and then he'll work with the uh, the pool supplier to install the pool equipment um, and it looks like he might be able to commence the beginning of November which would be nice so that's where we are with that 
to a certain extent inside the house there's not really a great deal that's been taken place because we're quite all right with that we did actually put um in fact let me show you on the inside when we did the actual front door um we also did the return around the front door inside which if you remember right it was cut back to get the door in so the hallway was finished but to get the door in because the door was so big the actual inner plasterboard had to be removed so that was removed which um quite a big gap in it side here so i've already shown you it anyway so it's now in and painted it's got to be sanded down a little bit and repainted again because it looks like we had something in the paint so um, but again it's all been filled down here now look it's all been painted in we do have a bit of an issue down here because this was a metal framework inside here and they've come away from the wall quite a bit so it's created a bit of a bow here um, but there's really not a great deal we can do what we might do is just cut away the plasterboard at the bottom because of the water getting be driven from the wind underneath the door and we might obviously just try and set back a, um, a skirting board into the plaster to try and lose what in effect is a bit of a bow about there so but other than that it's all in it's all plastered it's all painted um, we need to get that now sorted out at some stage in the next couple of days because it's now fix a foam that's a lot more firm so we need to cut this out refill around here resand and get that finished off um, and as you can see from the door finish it's not too bad certainly from a roll point of view but again with a bit of a sand on there and another coat and maybe something with lacquer I think it might have been Trevor um, I think Trevor or someone on the actual uh, comments yesterday commented about putting something with lacquer on the door um, yeah we would normally do that we would normally do that after a wet and dry the wet and dry is to get rid of all of the dimples um, but because we did a foam roller the dimples are very small so I think it'd be quite easy to wet and dry that down with the machine um, and then put a nice matte lacquer over it and then we can start working on getting the skirting boards on so again throughout the whole of here we did actually paint right through i mean you can see some of the markings on the wall from the plastering the joining between the plasterboard here and down here etc but you know it is what it is it's, a, it's, a, it's still a nice job it's all nice and white once the skirting boards are on and we've got the floor um, all this garbage out and got the floor uh, you know properly cleaned um, and sealed it'll be nice so Electricians come in potentially tomorrow to refinish off some of the actual sockets that are um, but have been temporary put in. That was temporary, so that's got to be changed. The sensor on the ceiling in the garage is a, was a temporary one, so that's going to be removed. And there's a few sockets without fascias and some sockets that aren't working, so that's going to be done tomorrow, fingers crossed. Other than that, really today, my plan is to sort out the manholes um, and get those put back down so that Dion can come and remeasure tomorrow. Um, oh, we actually had some of the... Um, one thing I will show you, we actually had some of the grills made. Check these out. We had that one there made. So that's a handmade aluminium. And it's nice and solid. Um, again, a little bit too wide here. I'd like to see that a little bit smaller. Uh, but other than that, it's a nice looking grill. Um, bit, bit monstrous, but again, it's about just trying to let the air from downstairs come through and the air from up here go down as well. So, um, and then there's another one over here, which I'll show you, which we had done from Oran. So Oran did a pretty good job actually on all of it. Trying to turn the music off. Yeah, so this is one that's done by Oran. So again, I just said I wanted some form of louvre. So as you can see, the outside's a lot smaller. So it does look a little bit more delicate. Um, and I'm after gonna go probably about half an inch thinner on both sides, just purely because the holes aren't perfect. So I've asked them to go for 10 by 20 inch. And that one just about fits in that hole. But as you can see, it's slightly skew width because it, the hole is dictating how it sits. Um, so it's louvered that way, as you can see. And there's nothing that way. So that one is a nicer looking grill. And that one over there has been made from a picture that I've shown. So it's completely fabricated from fresh. So they buy those parts in and put them together to, you know, to size. Whereas this one has been completely handmade. So let me know in the comments below which one do you prefer, A or B? A being this one, B being the other one. Let me know. Um, at the moment, that one's just a bit too chunky for me. So I think if, if it could maybe come down in size very slightly. As you can see, it's got quite a big lip. And potentially could be anodized in a different color. Maybe. So if it was anodized in a different color, what color would we go for? A standard silver, a polished aluminium, a light grey, a black. What do you think? So we've got quite a few. We've got another one here, another one here, 
each room there is a, it was meant to be for the central air system, obviously. So it's a, a return and a push of hot and cold air throughout the whole building. Um, and again, that's what Oran did. I didn't ask them to do a louver like that. They've actually made me some louver doors for the pool, which again, I'll show you. Sorry about this. We need air coming into the pool room over there from the front and the sides to let the air come through and let the um, environment breathe so that the units don't just rust from the inside. So I've asked them to do me 18 inch louvers, which is what they've done there, look. So they've done two of those. I asked them to do me one at 10 to 20. So they've actually done the same thing in the other. So they might be able to do a different design. So anyway, other than that, we fix the foam in the window here, all the way around. We did some fixer foam in some of the stuff in the house as well, which has been done, so I've got to cut those back today. Um, but fixer foam, by the way, it's always, it's always a good thing to use when you have big gaps in and around windows or doors or things like that. But so if it's an out, if it outside is getting to it, it starts going to like a, a, a yellow, dark yellow, orangey powder. So you need to trim it back sooner rather than later. And once you trim it back, then you try and need to get it filled sooner rather than later out as well. Otherwise it does go a bit brittle. So I'm gonna be up against it a little bit for out here. As you can see in the sun, it's already going an orange color. So it needs to be trimmed back and it needs to be filled over sooner rather than later. So I'm probably trim that back today and get some um, decorators cork put over the top of it just to try and protect it from the environment and the elements. Okay, other than that, that's it. I will check in with you a bit later on if there's any change, but for me, it's just about pulling out all the actual formwork from the manholes today. Um, probably cutting back some of the fixer phones and getting that, um, getting that decorator corked in. Um, I think that's it really. So any change I'll let you know, but I will check a view a little later on today and show you the changes. Thanks for watching, take care. Okay, a quick three, 3.38 check-in. I'm actually downstairs in the basement of the cottage, which is where the mains water and the mains water tanks are based. I came in just a minute ago to get some tools and I heard some whirring noise from the pump. I'm thinking, there's no one really in the house so the pump should be working. And then I found that we're in a foot of water. So I'm not too sure why. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. Um, I would say that something's gone on the pump, potentially. Um, I've just turned the valves off up here to try and actually stop them from filling out the water. Um, so I think at the moment that that has been delivering water somewhere, but it looks like it's been split, it's been coming into here. So the pump is pouring water into here, pulling from the mains and pulling from the pumps. So, I'm now going to have to empty all of this out, which is obviously not going to be that straightforward. And then I need to work out on the pump whereabouts that split is, because that's where I think it is. I think it's actually coming from the pump itself. So the pump will keep on pulling water. The water is actually coming straight into here, not into the house. And they're delivering more and more water that it needs. So, and as and when they're delivering water, they're going down, they're getting topped up. And I now have a mini swimming pool. So anyway, I'll check in the other bits we've done earlier on. All the actual manholes were finished earlier on, so I'll show you those as well. Um, but let me get out of here, start getting this emptied, and I'll report in on the other stuff. Then. Okay, so as soon as you turn on the power, you can hear the pump going crazy. Yeah, come out the back of the pump. So. Get the power switched off. And then obviously get Monsieur Plumber out. Peace and quiet. Start pumping the water out. It looks like a new pump is needed. Okay, so we have the culprit. Yes. Check valve. So just here was actually leaking out of a split that's occurred there so somehow the pressure has actually broken that and it was peeing out there and what we could see at the back of the pump all the water flying up in the air was actually the water getting deep and hitting the fan at the back of the pump which is what was making that noise so the noise and the water from the pump was actually the water actually getting too deep and the pump actually starting to submerge and all of it leaking out because of this. Wow. Would have thought these would be pressure treated to a certain PSI. Surely it should be double what is needed to go through it. 
let's face it, if it's just a water main, it can't be, the pressure can't be that great. So surely they can easily enough make this to withstand the, uh, the pressure of times two of the water mains, but clearly not. So I'm not sure what that actually does. I'm not sure it must stop the water going one way and allow it to go the other, I assume, that way. Uh, but anyway, there's a few of them down there as well, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Whilst I have you on, let me just take you down into the sun, which is blistering today. Blistering. And just show you briefly what I've been doing on the manholes. They end up being a bit of a mission in the end. Mainly because they're quite deep, so every time I tried to take the formwork out, it fell in, and that's trying to get down inside to get the formwork out. So here's the first one, just put the lid back into the hole itself. So all of them have actually had all of the formwork broken out, all of them hosed out. This one here, the benching at the bottom down here is not very good. In fact, the water is actually going in underneath the four inch pipe, so I'm going to have to get that rebenched somehow. Um, God knows how. I got down there on a ladder and literally struggled to do anything whilst I was down there. Uh, this one here, again I've cut back the weed sheet for now, so we can still reuse that if we need to. Again, I need to remove these nails in this one, but again all hosed out, all clean. Not that we've got any water at the moment, because I had to turn it off whilst the uh, repair is being done. So I did that one the other day, so I didn't have to do that one. But again, I did these two here, this one over here. The only one I didn't do, didn't finish off, was the one round here, a uh, grease trap. Because it was so wet, it was absolutely full of uh, termites. So I sprayed the living hell out of it and then left it for a while. And look at that termite mound that fell in. So all the termites are laying very still, so I'm assuming they're dead. So this one needs to be cleared out, hosed off, and then I need to find another piece of board. In fact, I'll probably just reuse that one for now um, because this will be done in the next few days. Um, but as you can see, this one will fill up to there. And it's nice to see that this one's coming in above where it's going out. The one round there I looked at isn't doing that. So I'm not too sure what happens when that is the case. Um, the whole point is that water comes in higher than it goes out so obviously that means it runs but that one is not doing that and that's for sure this one here so it's not massively different but both pipes i would say that the one going out is about half an inch higher than the one coming in which means all of the crap that's in there is going to be flowing backwards well, it won't go backwards obviously because it should have a run on it hopefully but it's certainly not going to flow out that way if it can't flow in properly so but anyway, um, they're all not perfect, that's for sure. You saw the uh, the, the uh, issue we had with making manholes here. Uh, they're certainly not in the perfect state, that's for sure. But anyway, once I've actually got the uh, aluminium um, heads in, that'll be a lot better. Uh, there's a bit of uh, surplus wood I've taken out today. I put the rest around the other side. This lot has been uh, terminexed, so I'm just waiting for all that to die, and then I'll move that over to this pile. And then uh, before the... Uh, day is over I'm going to get that one um, cleaned out emptied out hosed out and then the lid down and that will be hopefully it for manholes for a while tomorrow I actually have um, Dion my fabricator man coming out to measure up all the holes so we can start manufacturing um, all of the actual manholes themselves um, he's pretty quick so I would say he's probably have those done in the next week and then he'll have those installed which should be great news um, and the other thing I was working on today is I've got a couple of little sensor faults come up on my car for some unknown reason. So here, the temperature is so hot and the fuel, without being rude, is not very good around the world full stop. And I'm sure it's just as bad here. So I was cleaning out the um, cam sensors and uh, the throttle valves. And I went into the cottage to physically see if I could find um, some carburetor cleaner. And I heard the hose. <laughs> That's what started it. So anyway, I will continue doing that. Um, not that I could find the carburetor cleaner. Um, so anyway, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for today. Um, not a great deal to be done. I couldn't find any decent um, gate latches, um, but Dion did say he was gonna bring some down, some examples he's got. So I'll have a look at what he has first before I do anything else. Um, and if not, then I'll go and buy some stainless steel, um, but a nice looking bolts for now from um, uh, 
uh, Island Tiles down in Bridgetown. They're good. They've got some good stainless steel stuff and they do a lot of um, European spec stuff as well. So uh, I've been down there already. They got a couple of things in there, but I didn't really want to use a bolt. I wanted some form of little latch, but obviously out here, like he said, don't use anything with any mechanical movement because it will just rust and seize up and die. And he's got a point. So really what we should be looking at on here is some form of little L-shaped bracket for it, the gate to touch up against and then some form of spring where it pulls it shut but it's just on a manly open spring back, manly open spring back, that's what we should be doing really. That would then save any mechanical movement etc. Then again saying that the spring will be metal and that would rust them. So yeah, I'll come, I'll come up with some examples. Um, I don't know whether you guys have watched the videos from before. This is one of the manholes that Dion is making. Let me get it out and show you quickly. Aluminium are bloody heavy. So that is the manholes. Nice and big and solid, fair play to him. So we've got a lot of those to be made. So I'm not too sure what that one's for, but I might even look at getting that put in in the meantime. So hopefully, Dion will come and measure up tomorrow and get the rest of the manufacturing and get them installed as well. Anyway, that's it for today. Before I go, obviously, give me a, a thumbs up below if you, if you could. Um, some comments would be greatly appreciated. I'm sure I'll respond to them. I'm not checking it as often as I do, and YouTube, for some reason, has stopped notifying me as and when I get messages for some reason. So sorry if I don't actually apply to anybody that does um, give a comment. Uh, I will make a more concerted effort every day to check. Um, and is there anything in particular you guys want to see, like... Um, Obviously, but I think it's Barry or Trevor that wanted to see the actual opening of the gate, then do let me know. Um, other than that, I'll wait for another 45 minutes for the glue to dry on that mains, get the pump and the mains water turned back on again, continue getting the water pumped out, and potentially get back to working on my car. Have a great evening, thanks for watching.